The extent of his power cannot be put into words, and his perceptions have grown as well. To him... You are dust motes in a storm, a grain upon the beach, and as insignificant as a body that orbits the graveyard of Manacor. Dark Lord of the Sith Dark Nihilus is undisputably one of the most intriguing, powerful, and dark-sided up Sith Lords to ever ravage and purge Star Wars Galaxy. Darth Nihilus, along with his fellow comrade and Sith warrior Darth Sion, are most notably known for being the ones who originally purged the Jedi from the galaxy, insinuating the first great Jedi purge by killing nearly all Jedi in the galaxy, something that would only be replicated by Darth Sidious and Darth Vader over three millennia later. Darth Nihilus was an exceptionally powerful Sith, and on the channel, our archivists and database members have come to realize he very well could be the most powerful Sith of all time. Darth Nihilus's power, as Meet Sirsuric, Vissus Ma, and Tobin regarding him, stated that his, the extent of his power could not be put into words, meaning that Nihilus would inadvertently be placed above any Sith before him, which would include Emperor Vitiate. Darth Nihilus was exceptionally powerful. Darth Nihilus's power was beyond unfathomable. He became so powerful, he became akin to a genuine dark side entity, such as the son of Mortis, or Avaloth, the mother, the queen of the stars. The Lord of Hunger, Darth Nihilus, was exceptionally powerful. However, due to many of the students that have decided to enrol themselves in our academies, lackluster idea to delve into the forbidden section of our archives and immerse themselves in the ancient historic texts of the Sith. There is a lot of information regarding this Dark Lord's horrific, nigh omnipotent powers that many do not know about. So today, we are going to be informing you about his near limitless power. Before we begin, I would just like to note that many of the weary Jedi Knights that pass our archives and choose to enrol themselves in our databases have been unwilling to give themselves over to the will of the Force. And hit the subscribe button if you wish to descend into the rank of Master. I implore you, strike down the subscribe button. It is your destiny. Now, my friends, let us begin. Darth Nihilus was a Sith unlike any before him and during combat he fought an aggressive, brutal, and savage one-handed style with his unique crimson blade. He had learned some of the greatest Sith teachings, manuscripts, and from some of the most powerful Sith of all time. But such practices took the form of dependence. They would make him stronger, but due to his nature as a force wound, a side effect for being one of the survivors of the mass shadow generator that was activated on Malachor 5 during the culmination of the Mandalorian Wars, his strength would eventually deplete, and he would need to replenish it. He would have to feed upon the Force energy and life force to replenish his strength. Each time, the hunger that he commanded grew and grew, until he was forced to feed on entire planets to survive. For this reason, Force-sensitive beings, and beings like Yoda, Darth Bane, Mitra Surik, and Revan, as well as Vishia, would call out to Nihilus telepathically as well as worlds rich in the Force, would draw him. His reach in the Force eventually extended to an unfathomable point where he could feel Force users throughout the galaxy and to find planets that he would cleanse entirely of life, gorging himself on the Force energy of certain Force users, killing everything who was touched by the Force. Prolonged use of this power made him a threat to all life, as his craving grew more and more intense and potent with each feeding. Eventually, Nihilus's hunger, which was originally intended to be his greatest strength, controlled him, and not the other way around. He, the Sith Lord, would instinctively feed upon those around them, slowly decaying them and killing them. One interesting ability he practiced was Nihilus's own speech. Nihilus, at the height of his power, his own speech caused immeasurable, excruciating agony who, whoever in the vicinity could hear it. Like this, this ability is often compared to Deadly Sight. Deadly Sight was an ability where if you made constant eye contact to an individual, then their flesh would begin to shear off and burn. However, Nihilus had to merely speak and he would cause a measurable wave of torment and anguish to enroll upon his victim. N Nihilus's power was unfathomable. 
Those who served him became utter slaves in time. A pure example of this was the crew of the Ravager. The Ravager, for those who do not know, is Nihilus's personal flagship, which he ripped from the mass shadow surrounding Malachor V. Originally a Mandalorian warship that was in charge of the Mandalorian fleet in the final battle of the Mandalorian Wars, where the mass shadow generator was eventually used. Nihilus used telekinesis to lift a ship from the orbit of the planet and the mass shadows encompassing it. The only feat I can think of that is comparable to this would be in the Clone Wars, where Yoda, the Grand Master of the Jedi Order himself, utilised the Force to divert a separate destroyed carrier, two separate destroyed carriers at once, into one another. Not to sell the Grand Master short, he did inadvertently create a distraction and allowed the carrier to, one of the carriers to change direction. His ability was somewhat similar to Treya's own influence upon others, the reconvened Jedi Council in the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine, and further the Sith had somehow learned this ability to feed on the Force from her. While Nihilus had certainly learned how to hone his ability, practice it, and make it nigh unstoppable with Force strain on her, he did not learn it from her. His force strain ability came instinctively for him being a force wound after the events of Malachor V. And Treya imagined Nihilus becoming a threat to the entire galaxy, gorging on entire galaxies simultaneously in order to contain and gorge his hunger, sustaining it. Darth Nihilus was adept in many aspects of the force. He used an alternate variation of the Sever Force ability to portray Darth Treya alongside Darth Sion. Sever Force was a non-lethal force power that was often employed by the Jedi, but mainly the Sith. Sever Force allowed the being that was commanding the ability to strip their opponent momentarily of the force, most likely for a few minutes, making them prone and weary to savage strikes that were using the force. However, Nihilus found a way around this and made his own dark variation by stripping Treya of the force entirely and casting her out of the Sith Order, while severing someone's connection to the Force momentarily is vital to a, the outcome of a duel. Nihilus was literally able to kill the midichlorians coursing through Treya's veins. This is an enormous thing in Star Wars lore, as Darth Plagueis' life studies were de dedicated to the midichlorians. It is unknown if he was aware of this ability, or if he even knew about it. However, if it did, it would have shocked him and could hold a testament to Nihilus' immense power. Nihilus could also use the Force and telekinesis to lift starships, as he did on Malachor V with the Ravager. He tore it from the mass shadows that encompassed the planet and kept it together, even though it suffered immense extensive structural damage. Through the Force, Nihilus was able to evade death by containing his own consciousness. After eventually he had fed on so many beings, his body began to decay away and deteriorate as Nihilus' hunger grew and grew and the dark side nexus within him expanded. Nihilus began to fear for the first time in possibly years. He saw that he would have to rid himself of his mortal shell if he was to continue gorging himself on the galaxy's inhabitants and feeding on them. So, Darth Nihilus used an ancient Sith alchemic ritual in order to bind his consciousness in his armour, an ability that Darth Krayt the Dark Lord of the Sith and the last great Sith Lord of the Legends timeline, would inquire of Nihilus' holocron millennia later. He was also proficient in Dark Rage. Dark Rage was an ability that allowed a Dark Sider to briefly, most likely for 10 to 20 minutes, augment their speed, strength and aggression, augmenting the connection to the Force. This is similar to what happened to Savage Press on Dathomir, where Mother Talzin led her night sister Coven in a ritual that allowed Savage to become a hulking brute, the brother of Maul. Darth Maul is also proficient in Farsight, Force Lightning, with his Force Lightning being red. Red Force Lightning had a unique property. Not only could it literally rip the skin and vaporize individuals as Nihilus could, but prolonged exposure, like Sever Force, could rip someone of the Force entirely. Nihilus also used Force Resistance and Force Scream. Force Scream being the ability Palpatine would employ over three, nearly four thousand years later when he fought Windu, Kit Fisto, Aegon Kola, and Seisei Tin in the Chancellor's office. Nihilus would most likely use this when he was in a lightsaber duel, accompanied by his Dark Rage ability. 
allowing him to briefly stun the enemy using his overpowering force scream. He also was able to use Force Plague and Force Whirlwind. Force Plague acted as a fast-acting poison, slowly transcending an individual's body and killing the organs within them with invisible knives. And Force Whirlwind was an ability that allowed Nihilus to lift up multiple targets with telekinesis, create a swirling bubble of telekinesis, and among others, such as a dark variation of Force Healing. It is incredible in Star Wars lore, due to the fact that Darksiders typically are unable to utilize dark healing, or force healing for that matter, as that is strictly a light side ability. If a Darksider was able to find the method to heal, he, they, he or she, would have to let go of their ideals and religion as a Sith Lord, and briefly tap into the light. However, both Darth Zion and Darth Nihilus found loopholes around this. Nihilus's loophole was how he was able to gorge himself on people's life and keep his body and immense power together. His knowledge also extended to Sith alchemy, a trait that he shared with his master, Kraya. During the Second Battle of Onderon, Nihilus' own form sect of Sith followers utilised ancient Sith techniques that would bend tame beasts to their will. Nihilus could increase the strength of Force powers that he used greatly, if you wish. He was capable of grasping through the Force and a range as far as the star system, searching for any beings and planets to satiate his hunger. Well, my friends, this was the complete power of Dark Lord of the Sith Nihilus. I hope now you can comprehend fully why I believe Nihilus is the most powerful Sith Lord of all time. Be free to leave your comments in the description down below of what you want to see in the next installment of Star Wars Brain Busters. This is all Acolytes. This is where we part ways, and I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away.